All right, John, thanks so much. We are just moments away from the first big round of poll closings and the first actual results from the critical battleground state of Georgia. The Senate race there among a handful of contests that will decide which party controls the chamber. And we are ready to make our first projection. CNN is projecting that incumbent Republican Senator Tim Scott will be re-elected, defeating Crystal Matthews. There are four Senate races that are too early right now, too early to call. Those races are, not surprisingly, the big Senate race in Georgia between incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock and football star Herschel Walker. Too early to call. Also too early to call. Races in Vermont. There is an open Senate seat between Congressman Peter Welsh and the challenger Malloy. Too early to call in Vermont. Too early to call in Indiana. Incumbent Senator Todd Young running for re-election. That race too early to call. And then Kentucky incumbent Senator Rand Paul. Too early to call right now. He is running for re-election. Let's look at the balance of power in the Senate at this hour right now. Remember, Democrats need, Democrats have 36 Senate seats. Republicans currently have 30 seats. 34 seats remain. And we'll be bringing those to you over the next few hours. 34 seats. Republicans only need to pick up one seat. One seat to win and regain control of the U.S. Senate. We are finally starting to get some votes in this race that we have been talking about literally for months. Raphael Warnock out to an early lead, 75% of the vote. He's ahead by about 15,000 votes of Herschel Walker right now, who's coming in at 24.1%. Obviously, we're going to need to ask John King at the Magic Wall exactly where this vote is coming from because we do not expect this race to be quite so lopsided as our early totals are showing us. Again, just 1% of the vote in here. And Chase Oliver, that Libertarian candidate, he could be the one that decides whether this race goes to a runoff because if he picks up enough and neither one of these men is above 50, we could be looking, up, uh, looking at four more weeks of this. Let's check in on Florida where we are also starting to get Votes. Remember, Florida counts pretty early. Val Demings out to an early lead, 63.5%, to Marco Rubio's 35.7%. Another one where we're really going to want to know where the votes are coming in here because we do expect this to tighten as the night goes on. Just 5% of the votes in, in Florida. Boris, I think you've got uh, some updates on the governor's race. It's still very early. We're going to take a quick look at Georgia to start right now. Stacey Abrams has a lead over incumbent Republican Brian Kemp. Abrams leading by about 13,000 votes. A lopsided advantage, but keep in mind, only 1% of the vote in in the Peach State, a very important state for control of the U.S. Senate. Let's get an update now, a key race alert from the state of Florida, because there, Charlie Crist, the Democrat also in the lead against incumbent Republican Ron DeSantis. He's ahead about 100,000 votes, but only 5% of the vote in so far in the Sunshine State, Jake. All right, John King, polls are closing in three more states, two of them. Ohio and North Carolina have high-stakes U.S. Senate races, so we're watching very closely. So here is a key race alert. CNN is saying it is too early to call. Too early to call the Ohio Senate race between J.D. Vance and incumbent Congressman uh, Tim Ryan, uh, both of them squaring off for an open U.S. Senate seat. Too early to call in Ohio. In North Carolina, another open Senate seat from another Republican, a Republican retiring. That race as well between Cherry Beasley uh, and Congressman Ted Budd, that race also too early to call. The overall balance of power right now in the U.S. Senate, Democrats control 36 U.S. Senate seats. Republicans control 30 U.S. Senate seats. 34 seats remain. Remember, Republicans only need to pick up one net Senate seats. Let's go to Boris Sanchez right now who has a projection when it comes to governor's races. Boris. Jake, this is our first projection in a governor's race for the evening, and it comes from the state of Ohio. There, incumbent Republican Mike DeWine thread a needle. He was both critical of Donald Trump after the January 6th insurrection and then earned the former president's endorsement after the Republican primary. He defeats uh, the Democratic mayor of Dayton, Ohio, Nan Whaley. Let's get some key race alerts now, beginning with the state of Florida. Last time we checked in, the former Republican governor turned Democratic Congressman Charlie Crist had the lead. Now it belongs to Ron DeSantis, more than 285,000 votes ahead with 44% of the vote in in Florida. Let's get an update now on the state of Georgia. There, still very early, but legendary vote mobilizer Stacey Abrams is ahead. 73,000 votes against incumbent Republican Brian Kemp, only 13% of the vote in there. So we will likely watch that 
uh, potentially change throughout the night as we turn it over to Casey on who has some Senate races. We for sure will. Thank you very much, Boris. And I do want to start actually in Georgia. We are starting to get some numbers where we can compare things a little bit. So let's take a look at this. Raphael Warnock sitting at 60.1%. But look at that Herschel Walker number, 38.5%. That is different from the Republican gubernatorial candidate, Brian Kemp, who sits at 42.6%. So again, we want to check with John King on this, but some early signs that perhaps as expected, Herschel Walker's underperforming Brian Kemp, the gubernatorial candidate there. We still expect this race to tighten considerably, only 13% of the vote in here. Let's go now to Florida, where Marco Rubio has taken the lead, uh, probably as many of you expected. He's sitting now at 54% to Val Demings, 45%. Florida's going to count these votes relatively quickly. We've got 45% of the vote in there, but we're obviously going to keep watching it through the night. Let's go north now, though, to New Hampshire, where we are just starting to get votes in uh, to this state, which swings uh, so often with a wave when we see one. Maggie Hassan out to a relatively early lead again there's only a few thousand votes in here, but she's sitting at 59.2% to Don Baldick's 39.6%. This is one where Republicans started to take more interest, were encouraged by how things were moving late, uh, but Hassan's team has been feeling good throughout the night so far. We've got 1% of the vote in in New Hampshire, Jake. All right, John King, we are just moments away from the biggest round of poll closings this evening, including that critical Senate contest in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that could go a long way toward deciding control of the U.S. Senate. As of right now, CNN is projecting that Senator Marco Rubio, the Republican from Florida, will be reelected, defeating Congresswoman Val Demings. In Alabama, CNN is projecting that Katie Britt will win her Senate seat, defeating uh, uh, her opponent. She is a former staffer for the retiring Republican uh, Dick Shelby in that Alabama Senate seat, so that's a hold for Republicans. In Oklahoma, CNN is projecting that incumbent Senator James Lankford will win. In the special election in Oklahoma, CNN is projecting that Mark Wayne Mullen will be elected, defeating Kendra Horn. And then in Kentucky, we, CNN is projecting that incumbent Republican Senator Rand Paul will be reelected. The big Senate race in Pennsylvania, CNN is declaring to be too early to call, and the big Senate race. That's between uh, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman and TV's Dr. Mehmet Oz. Too early to call as of right now. And in New Hampshire, a competitive race between incumbent Democratic Senator Maggie Hassan against retired General Don Bolduc. Again, too early to call. Let's look at the map in general right now. Right now, we have no projection in Connecticut, Illinois, Maryland, Missouri, and then, as I said, New Hampshire and Pennsylvania. Too early to call right now. The overall balance of power in the U.S. Senate. Democrats have 36 of the Senate seats. Republicans have 35 Senate seats. There are 29 seats remaining. That's what the rest of the night is about. Remember, Republicans only need to pick up one net seat from the Democrats in order to regain control of the Senate. But we have governor's races for you as well. And Boris Sanchez has those. Jake, we have two projections to bring you from the South, including a major, major win for Republicans in the state of Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis winning re-election by a considerable margin. Right now, DeSantis is up nearly 16 percentage points. That's notable because Donald Trump won the state of Florida in 2020 by about three and a half points. DeSantis, of course, widely speculated that he may run for president. Trump certainly thinks so with some of his recent attacks on the Florida governor who earns a return trip to the governor's mansion in the Sunshine State. We also have a projection to bring you from Ruby Red, Alabama, a state that Donald Trump won, earning about 60% of the vote in 2020. Their incumbent Republican Kay Ivey, a staunch Trump supporter, she defeats rehabilitative therapist Yolanda Flowers to win another four years in Alabama. We also have a key race alert to bring you now. From the Peach State in Georgia, right now, Democratic activist Stacey Abrams 44, it just changed, 38,000 votes ahead of incumbent Republican Brian Kemp. The lead thinning there with the last update, still only 31% of the vote in, in Georgia. We'll see with, well, that, where that winds up as the night moves along. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. States where polls have closed, but where it is too early for CNN to make a projection. We're talking about Connecticut, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, as well as Rhode Island and the Volunteer State. 
of Tennessee. Let's turn it over now to Casey Hunt, who has some updates for us from Senate races. Casey. Yeah, and Boris, let's start in Georgia. She just gave us an update on the governor's race there. Let's compare it to where things stand in the Senate race. Raphael Warnock up at 54.5% to Herschel Walker's 43.9%. So that spread between where the Republican Governor Kemp is at 48.2% right now has widened. Walker is just at 43.9%. That has to be giving some of the Democrats I've been talking to throughout the night a little bit of relief. We got, though, a third of the vote in here. We do, of course, expect this to be one of the tightest on the map. Let's take a look at North Carolina, where the Democrat Sher Sherry Beasley has an early lead over Republican Ted Budd. Remember, this is retiring Republican Senator Richard Burr's seat. So a Democratic win here would represent a pickup for them, although we do expect this race to tighten through the evening. Uh, we have about 46 percent of the vote in in North Carolina right now. Now let's go check in on Ohio, where the Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan is out to an early lead of 58.1% to the Republican J.D. Vance's 41.8%. With a spread that wide, we really do have to ask where those votes are coming from. We've only got about 20% of the vote in, in Ohio right now. And let's also check in on New Hampshire, where Maggie Hassan uh, is at 64.1% to the Republican Don Baldock's 35.4%. She's about 13,000 votes ahead, so that tells you where we are in the vote count, we're not very far in. We are at 8%, but you'd rather be Maggie Hassan at this hour than Don Baldock, Jake. Thanks, John King. And we have some projections for you now. Three projections for Republicans running for the House of Representatives. In Florida, Trump-endorsed Army veteran Corey Mills, CNN is projecting, has won a seat representing Seminole County. Republican Air Force veteran Anna Paulina Luna, CNN is projecting, has won a red-leaning district that includes St. Petersburg. She formerly worked at Turning Point USA, a pro-Trump youth organization. In Florida, Republican Laurel Lee is the winner in a newly drawn Tampa area district. She is a former Florida Secretary of State. Let's look at the balance of power now uh, in uh, the House of Representatives. 19 Democrats have been elected, 45 Republicans, including three pickups. There are still 371 seats remaining. Needing to control, of course, is 218. What's the state of play in the 83 competitive U.S. House seats that we've isolated? Well, Republicans need to win 27 of them. That's down from 30, so they're on their way. Democrats need to win 53 of those competitive seats. That's the same number we had before. Projections as polling places close in Arkansas. And CNN is making a projection right now. CNN is projecting that incumbent, Democrat, incumbent Republican Senator Todd Young will be reelected in the state of Indiana, the Hoosier state getting another term with Senator Todd Young. In Arkansas, it is too early to call between incumbent Senator John Bozeman and Democrat Natalie James. Too early to call at this moment right now. Let's take a look at the balance of power right now in the U.S. Senate. Democrats hold 36 seats. Republicans hold 36 seats as well. 28 seats remain. Remember, you need 51 seats to control the U.S. Senate. Republicans need to pick up one net seat from the Democrats in order to win control of the U.S. Senate. Let's talk about governor's races now. Boris Sanchez has more there. Jake, we have three projections to bring you. All three of them Republican holds, beginning in the state of New Hampshire. Chris Sununu, there are rumors he may run for president in 2024. Sununu winning a fourth term, defeating physician Tom Sherman. Meantime, in the state of South Carolina, not a competitive race there. The incumbent Republican, Henry McMaster, defeating former Democratic Congressman Joe Cunningham to win another four years. An update now from Tennessee, another reliably red state. Donald Trump won 60-ish percent of the vote there in 2020. Bill Lee winning re-election, the incumbent Republican defeating ICU physician Jason Martin. Let's get a look at some key race alerts now, beginning with that all-important race we will not stop talking about in the state of Georgia. The last time we checked, Stacey Abrams had the lead. Now that has flipped. Brian Kemp, the incumbent Republican, leads with roughly 40,000 votes, with 42% of the vote in. Notably, Kemp above that 50% threshold, meaning he could avoid a runoff. Let's get a look at Texas now. Former Democratic Congressman Beto O'Rourke with a 60,000 vote advantage right now over incumbent Republican Greg Abbott, about 26% of the vote in in Texas. An update now, a key race alert from the state of Michigan. 
uh, incumbent Democrat Tudor, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, I should say, locked in a tough re-election battle against conservative commentator Tudor Dixon. Right now, Whitmer sitting 55,000 votes ahead, still very, very early in the night in Michigan. Only 3% of the vote in there. We also have a key race alert to bring you from the state of Pennsylvania, where Attorney General Josh Shapiro has a 287,000 vote advantage over Doug Mastriano. Remember, Mastriano's an election denier who tried to overturn the 2020 election results in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Still early there, though, only 8% of the vote in. Let's turn it over to my friend Casey Hunt, who has an update for us on Senate races. Casey. And you know what, Boris? We've got some really interesting comparisons to show you between what we just learned about the governor's races and where we stand here in the Senate. And let's start in Georgia, where Raphael Warnock is leading 51.9% to Herschel Walker's 46.4%. Just to refresh, the governor's race looks the opposite. Kemp at 50.9, Abrams at 48.6. That really shows you the difference here in terms of performance. We got 43% of the vote in in Georgia. We expect to stay close all evening. Now let's check in on North Carolina, where Sherry Beasley is at 52% to Ted Budd's 46.3%. You just heard that great breakdown from John King about where the votes are still out. There is reason for the Budd campaign to potentially be optimistic here. Uh, we're going to be sticking close to this all night. 55% of the vote in there. Now uh, let's go to Ohio, where Tim Ryan is out to an early lead, 56.9% to J.D. Vance's 43%. But it is still extremely early in Ohio. And of course, this is a state that has trended uh, very red in recent years. We've got 29% of the vote in in Ohio. But now let's go to New Hampshire, where Maggie Hassan is sitting at 60.7% to Don Bolduc's 38.2%. Democrats in New Hampshire telling me they feel very good about where Maggie Hassan is at this hour. But of course, it's extremely early, just 14.9% of the vote has been counted. Uh, in New Hampshire. But now let's check in on Pennsylvania because we can compare these numbers here to what Boris just told us in the governor's race. John Fetterman at 80.1% to Mehmet Oz's 17.9%. Obviously, the race is going to end much closer than where it stands right now. But Shapiro is sitting at 84.5%. He's the Democratic candidate for governor. That gives you a little bit of an idea of how Fetterman is underperforming Shapiro, which has been the concern for Democrats all the way along that potential ticket splitters, especially in the Philadelphia collar counties, would pick Mehmet Oz for Senate and Shapiro for governor. Jake. All right, Casey. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. We've been telling you all night there are about 82 House seats that are competitive, races that are competitive, that we're really keeping an eye on because it is in those 82 races that the balance of power in the House of Representatives will be won or lost. Let's give you an update right now. Right now, of the 23 competitive seats that are too early to call, the voting has ended, but they're too early to call. Democrats are leading in 15 of them. Republicans are leading in eight of them. It's early yet. That doesn't necessarily mean Democrats are going to win 15 of them, but that is the state of play as of right now. All right, John King, we are heading into the second busiest hour of the night. Polls are closing in 15 states with a slew of high-profile races in key battlegrounds, including Arizona. And we have a CNN projection for you right now in New York. CNN is projecting that the current Senate Majority Leader, Democrat Charles Schumer, will be reelected, defeating Joe Pinion. In South Dakota, CNN is projecting that a member of Republican leadership, Senator John Thune, will be reelected, defeating Brian Banks. And in Kansas, CNN is projecting that incumbent Republican Senator Jerry Moran will be reelected, defeating Democrat Mark Holland. Let's look at the map right now and talk about the uh, races that we are not yet to make, going to make a projection. They include the Senate races in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, North Dakota, and Wisconsin. As of right now, we do not have a projection in those races. The balance of power, of course, 100 Senate seats. Democrats have 37 of those seats. Republicans have 38 of those seats. There are 25 seats remaining. Republicans only need to pick up one net seat in order to regain control of the U.S. Senate. There are governor's races going on out there as well. Let's go to Boris Sanchez for that. Jake, two projections to bring you right now, beginning with a familiar face being elected governor of Arkansas. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the former Donald Trump press secretary slash communications director, following in the footsteps of her father, Mike Huckabee, becoming the new governor of Arkansas. We should note. She becomes the first woman elected governor of that state, defeating Chris Jones. Another projection to bring you now, this one from Rhode Island. There, incumbent Democrat Dan McKee will win his first full term in the governor's mansion, 
Remember, he replaced uh, Gina Raimondo when she left the governor's mansion to join the Biden administration as the Commerce Secretary. We have some key, rates alert, key race alerts to bring you now, beginning with the state of Texas. Last time we checked in, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke had a decent advantage. Right now, Greg Abbott, the incumbent Republican, has overtaken him, nearly 170,000 vote lead for Abbott with 33% of the vote in. An update now from the Peach State, Georgia. Brian Kemp building on the lead that we saw him take earlier against Stacey Abrams. Right now, he stands 177,000 votes ahead, roughly 8% advantage for Kemp, still above that 50% threshold to avoid a runoff with 55% of the vote in, in Georgia. Meantime, an unexpectedly close race in Oklahoma. A key race alert there, Kevin Stitt, the incumbent Republican, taking on Joy Hoffmeister, a Democrat who actually flipped parties just last year specifically for this race. State right now, 43,000 votes ahead with 34% of the vote in. Jake. All right, John, right now CNN has making, is about to make two more projections uh, in House races in Florida. Republican Maria Elvira Salazar, CNN is projecting, has won a second term in office in her Miami area district. It went narrowly for Trump in 2020. She is a former TV journalist. Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar will be reelected, CNN is projecting. In Virginia, Democratic Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton, CNN is projecting, has been elected to a third term in office. She represents the Washington suburbs in northern Virginia. So that's one win for a Republican, one win for a Democrat. The balance of power right now, 48 Democrats have been elected, 92 Republicans have been elected. That includes three pickups. 295 seats are remaining. Remember, you need 218 seats in order to control the House of Representatives. In the U.S. House, of the competitive seats that we're keeping an eye on, Republicans have to win 26 of them, we now say. That is down from 27. So they have made one more gain there for, that they need to do. Democrats have as well. Democrats need to pick up 52. That is down from 53 in terms of competitive seats. Let's go to Casey Hunt now, uh, who will tell us more about what's going on with the Senate races. That's right, Jake. Let's check in across the map, and we're going to start in a place we've been all night, and that is Georgia, where Raphael Warnock in the lead right now, 51.2% to Herschel Walker's 47%. But as we've seen, this has been bouncing back and forth, and I expect that you're going to be hearing a lot of us talking about this tonight. Let's check in, though, now on Ohio, where J.D. Vance has taken the lead, 50.3% over Democrat Tim Ryan, the congressman who now is at 49.7%. Again, Ohio has trended red in recent years. North Carolina, we've got Ted Budd, the Republican, narrowly ahead of Democrat Sherry Beasley, 49.4% to 48.6%. This is a real nail-biter at this hour, though we do have 70% of the vote in. Now let's go north to New Hampshire, where Maggie Hassan is holding her lead uh, in a pretty commanding way at 57.4% to Don Baldock's 41.3%. He is the Republican. Considering how Chris Sununu has performed as the Republican in the governor's race. Pretty significant that Maggie Hassan is right there. Now let's take a look at Pennsylvania, where John Fetterman is sitting at 64.5% to Mehmet Oz's 33.1%. Obviously, we expect this race to end up much closer than what you're seeing on your screen right now. We only have about 15% of the vote in in Pennsylvania. And let's check in on Colorado, where Michael Bennett is out to an early lead, 58.2% over Joe O'Day, the Republican. 39.6%. This is not a seat that Democrats wanted to have to worry about, but that came online near the end of this midterm season as the national environment shifted for Republicans. We've got about a third of the vote in in Colorado. We're going to be keeping an eye on that through the evening as well. Now we've got some uh, in key race alerts on the governor's races. Yeah, but a handful of key race alerts beginning in the state of Texas. There, the incumbent Republican Greg Abbott maintaining a lead over former Congressman, former uh, Senate and uh, White House hopeful Beto O'Rourke. Right now, Abbott leading by 80,000 votes with 51% of the vote in in Texas as he seeks a third term. Let's get an update now from the Peach State in Georgia. There, incumbent Republican Brian Kemp maintaining a slight advantage over Stacey Abrams, though the, the 90,000 vote difference between the two is a bigger margin than when Kemp won by four years ago. Keep that in mind, 64% of the vote in, he maintains uh, an advantage over that 50% threshold. In Pennsylvania, Attorney General Josh Shapiro, 324,000 votes ahead of Doug Mastriano, 15% of the vote there in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Let's get an update now, a key race alert from the state of Michigan. Incumbent Democrat Gretchen Whitmer currently leading 
Conservative commentator Tudor Dixon, an election denier as well, 11% of the vote. And we just got an update. It appears Whitmer is 36, 37-ish thousand votes ahead as we get an update from Michigan. Let's take a look at a race that nobody expected would be as close as it was at the end. Incumbent Democrat Kathy Hochul running for her full first term in office. She currently leads considerably over Congressman from Long Island and election denier Lee Zeldin. 265,000 votes as we just got the update from the Empire State. A 9% uh, of the vote in right now in the state of New York. We'll send it back to you, Jane. All right, John King, thanks so much. And CNN has some more projections right now. CNN is projecting that incumbent Senator John Bozeman from Arkansas will be reelected. He defeats Natalie James in Vermont. CNN projects that Congressman Peter Welch will get the promotion and become the next senator from the state of Vermont in an open seat defeating Gerald Malloy. Let's take a look at the overall balance of power in the 100 seat U.S. Senate. Democrats currently control 38 seats. Republicans currently control 39 seats, 23 seats are remaining. We also have a, a key race alert that we're going to go to Casey Hunt right now. Casey? That's right, Jake. We're going to take a quick spin through all of these races for you. we got a whole bunch of vote in. we got Raphael Warnock sitting at 51% right now in Georgia to Herschel Walker's 47.2. He is, of course, right now above that critical threshold to avoid a runoff. We're going to be keeping close tabs. We've seen this move back and forth here in the last hour or so. 65% of the vote in there. Now let's check in on Ohio, where J.D. Vance still in the lead, but it's close, 50.3% uh, to Tim Ryan, the Democratic congressman, 49.7%. John King is going to need to walk us through where the votes are still out to let us know if it's actually going to end up being that close. It's about 45% of the vote in there. Now in North Carolina, look at this, Ted Budd sitting at 50% to Sherry Beasley's 48%. This is actually a little bit of a wider lead than we've seen at some points on this race tonight. We've got 72% in, uh, in, of the vote in in North Carolina. All right, let's move now to New Hampshire, where we've got Maggie Hassan sitting at 57.8%, Don Baldick sitting at 40.9%. Smart Republicans and Democrats that I'm talking to who are looking at these numbers say Hassan is in a very strong position at this hour. But, of course, we only have 30% of the vote in, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Now let's go out to Colorado. This, again, a reach for Republicans, Michael Bennett at 58.6% to Joe O'Day, the Republicans 39.2% at this hour. But of course, we do need to know where the votes are coming in because we're only looking at 40% of them so far. Now let's check in on Wisconsin, expected to be one of the tightest races on the map tonight. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. Mandela Barnes in the early vote out to 70% ahead of Ron Johnson, the incumbent Republican who sits at 29.8% right now. I'm sure John King can explain to us why it looks that way. Uh, there's about 4% of the vote in right now in Wisconsin. Now I want to check in on Iowa, another unexpected place on the map, but there was an Iowa poll late in the cycle from a very trustworthy pollster out there that showed Chuck Grassley, the incumbent Republican, in a tight race with Democrat Michael Franken. And some early returns show Franken out ahead 58.3% to Chuck Grassley's 41 0.6%, but there is very little vote in in Iowa at this hour. We only have 11% in. Let's also dip in on Pennsylvania, where John Fetterman, the Democrats, at 60.5%. These numbers are moving in real time. To Dr. Mehmet Oz's 37%. This is another situation where they're going to count votes very slowly. This is one where there's already litigation challenges, questions about how these votes are going to be counted, and we expect that's going to go late into the night. 17% of the vote in in Pennsylvania. Now, Boris. Uh, has got some governor's races to talk to us about, some of which are in some of these same states. I yeah, it'll be interesting to see how voters may have split tickets in these races, Casey. First, let's start in the state of Texas. There we have an update. Incumbent Republican Greg Abbott building on the earlier lead he had on Beto O'Rourke, the former congressman, 149,000 votes ahead for the two-term, uh, two-time governor of Texas, 52% of the vote in there. Let's take a look at the state of Georgia. Brian Kemp right now with 111,000 vote advantage over Stacey Abrams, 66% of the vote in. Notably, he is above that 50% threshold, meaning he could potentially avoid a runoff if this holds. And we just got an update there. Now 115,000 vote lead for Kemp. Let's take a look at the state of Michigan. Incumbent Democrat Gretchen Whitmer locked in this tough re-election battle with conservative commentator, former TV host Tudor Dixon. A 42,000 vote advantage for Whitmer, roughly an 8% lead right now, still very early with only 12% of the vote in. 
Let's get an update for you from Pennsylvania. There, the Attorney General, Josh Shapiro, he has nearly a 300,000 vote advantage over Doug Mastriano, one of the most extreme candidates you are going to see on the board tonight. 17% of the vote in in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, one that our Jake Tapper knows very well. Jake. All right, John King, thanks so much. And we have some projections for you right now. CNN has three projections. One of them is a pretty significant one. CNN is projecting that incumbent Democratic Senator Michael Bennett will be reelected, defeating Joe O'Day. Republicans had a lot of hopes, a lot of hopes that Joe O'Day was going to be able to pick off Bennett in purple Colorado. They fell short, which indicates that this is not necessarily going to be the kind of night, the kind of great night Republicans were expecting. Two other projections in Maryland, the Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen will be reelected, CNN projects, defeating Chris Chafee, a Republican. And in North Dakota, CNN is projecting that former governor and current Senator John Hoven will be reelected, defeating Democrat Katrina Christensen. The balance of power in the U.S. Senate, as you know, 100 Senate seats. Democrats currently have 40. Republicans currently have 40. There are 20 seats remaining. That's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the night and perhaps a few more days after that. Republicans, of course, remember, need to pick up one net Democratic seat in order to regain control of the U.S. Senate. We have governor's races, of course, now as well, and Boris Sanchez has some projections there. Jake, a trio of projections and three victories for Democrats, beginning with history being made in Maryland. Wes Moore, who had never been elected to public office in his life, will become the first black governor of the state of Maryland as he defeats election denier Dan Cox. Another historic uh, win in Massachusetts for Democrats, Maura Healey, in another pickup for Democrats, she becomes the first woman elected governor of Massachusetts and the first openly lesbian governor in the history of the United States as she defeats election denier Jeff Deal. Meantime, the first openly gay governor in U.S. history will win re-election in, in Colorado. Jared Polis defeats Heidi Ganahl, a Republican entrepreneur. We also have some key race alerts to bring you right now, beginning with the state of Georgia. We've not stopped talking about Georgia all night. We will continue talking about these races. Brian Kemp right now, 204,000 votes ahead of Stacey Abrams, roughly a 7 percentage point advantage with 72% of the vote in in the Peach State. Let's get a look at Texas now. There, incumbent Republican Greg Abbott with a similar lead, 282,000 votes ahead of former Congressman Beto O'Rourke, 56 percent of the vote in in the state of Texas. An update now from Michigan. This tough re-election battle for incumbent Democrat Gretchen Whitmer. She stands roughly in the same place where she was when we last checked in on Michigan, a 40,000 vote advantage against former TV host and conservative commentator Tudor Dixon, only 13 percent of the vote in in Michigan. Let's take a look at a true toss-up. Joe Biden won the state of Wisconsin in 2020 by an eyelash, only about 20,000 votes. Tony Evers, the incumbent Democrat right now, holding on to a 76,000 vote advantage over Tim Michaels with 21% of the vote in, in Wisconsin. Voting is about to end in three more states, including Nevada, another key battleground that could tip the scale in the fight for the control of the U.S. Senate. And we have a key race alert for you now. It is too early to call. The U.S. Senate race in Nevada between Senator Cortez Masto and Mr. Laxalt, Adam Laxalt. It is too early to call. We do not have any information for you there to project. In terms of Utah, between incumbent Republican Senator Mike Lee and his challenger, Independent Evan McMullen, also too early to call. The balance of power in the U.S. Senate, as we've been telling you all night, this is key. There are 40 Democratic senators, 40 Republican senators, 20 seats outstanding. That is what we are going to be spending the rest of the night focusing on. Republicans need to pick up one net seat in order to regain control of the U.S. Senate. But right now, it's tied 40-40. Boris Sanchez now has a projection at the governor's desk. Or yeah, Jake, a trio of projections to bring you in all of them. Republican incumbents hanging on, including in the state of South Dakota, where Democrats have not elected a governor since the 1970s. There, Kristi Noem earns another four years, defeating Jamie Smith. She is someone that potentially has presidential, if not vice presidential, aspirations for 2024. An update now, a projection from the state of Oklahoma. There, Kevin Stitt getting a big boost from national Republicans late in the game, a big influx of cash there. He defeats Democratic challenger Joy Hoffmeister to earn a return trip to the governor's mansion in Oklahoma. An update now from the state of Vermont. In a state that Joe Biden won by a considerable margin, Republican Governor Phil Scott earns another four years. He is the only Republican holding on to statewide office in that state as he defeats progressive educator Brenda Siegel. 
a number of key race alerts to bring you now. Beginning in the state of Texas, Republican incumbent Greg Abbott building on his lead. He's now 368,000 votes ahead of Beto O'Rourke with 58% of the vote in in the Lone Star State. Let's get a look at Michigan right now. Gretchen Whitmer, roughly the same place, maybe a, a slimmer advantage than the last time we checked in on her contest with Tudor Dixon. 36,000 votes ahead for the Democratic incumbent with 16% of the vote in. An update now, again from Georgia. Brian Kemp there, 247,000 votes ahead of Stacey Abrams. Notable in this rematch, last time around, Kemp only won by about 50,000 votes. This is a much bigger lead, and as you just saw, he added another 1,000 votes to that advantage with 77% of the vote in, in Georgia. We finish with Wisconsin, the key race alert there, 85,000 votes separating these two candidates. Tony Evers, the incumbent, holding on to an advantage over election denier Tim Michaels, 35% of the vote in in Wisconsin. As we turn it over to Casey Hunt, we have to point out there's also a big Senate race in Wisconsin as well. There sure is, Boris. We're going to walk across the map here. I want to start, take a guess, Georgia, <laughs> which is where we've been talking about all night. Rafael Warnock back in the lead by 0.1%. Look at that, 2,300 or so votes separating Warnock from Herschel Walker at this hour. We've got 77% of the vote in, but I think it's very obvious to everybody watching this could go either way. Let's take a look at Wisconsin. We obviously just saw uh, what Boris was pointing out. It's similar on the Senate side. Mandela Barnes, the Democrat, sitting at 51.8%, but that is not as strong as uh, the gubernatorial candidate. Ron Johnson, the incumbent Republican, at 48%. We expect this to be one of the closest Senate contests throughout the night. We've only got 34% of the vote in, so keep watching that one. Pennsylvania, let's check back in. This has changed pretty dramatically since the last time we really looked at it. John Fetterman is now at 52.1% to Mehmet Oz's 45.4%. This is starting to look a lot more like we expect it to look as they count the votes, perhaps over the next couple of days, depending on how close it remains. Right now, about 146,000 votes separating them. Fetterman has been underperforming the Democratic candidate in the governor's race, Josh Shapiro. So another thing to keep an eye on. Let's check in on Ohio, where J.D. Vance has expanded his lead a little bit over Democrat Tim Ryan, the congressman who's challenging him. This is, of course, retiring Republican Rob Portman's seat, so if Vance can hang on to this lead, it'll represent a Republican hold, 53.4% to Ryan's 46.6%. We still do, of course, have about 30% of the vote outstanding there. Now let's go down to North Carolina, where Ted Budd is still leading Democrat Sherry Beasley, 50.8% to Sherry Beasley's 47%. 0.1% retiring uh, Republican Richard Burr has this seat right now. So this would represent a Republican hold. This has been pretty steady for the past couple of hours, but the vote count creeping upward. We're now at 83% in North Carolina. And let's check back in in New Hampshire. This is one that a lot of people were looking to for signs of potentially an early Republican wave if Don Bolduck, the Republican, had a particularly strong showing. So far, that's just not happening. Maggie Hassan is at 57.2%. Bolduc down at 41.5. Now, granted, we still only have about 40% of the vote in there, so things could still change. Uh, but I will say Democrats are saying good things about New Hampshire right now on the Senate side, Jake. Well, it's a nice state. Of course they're <laughs> saying nice things. Let's take a look at the balance of power uh, right now in the competitive seats. Remember, we're looking at 82 competitive House seats. We're not going to look at all 435. There are 82 competitive ones. Of those 82, there are 51 competitive seats that we think are too early to call. Right now, in those 51, Democrats are leading in 39 of them. Republicans are leading in 12 of them. It's early. We do not know that this is going to be determinative, but this is certainly, if you're a Democrat watching at home, better news than what a lot of Republicans were hoping for at this point in the night. All right, John, and CNN has some projections for you right now in the U.S. House. One Democrat, three Republicans. CNN is projecting the Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger is the winner in Virginia's 7th Congressional District. She's a former CIA case officer. She's criticized her party for moving too far to the left. This was a seat that Republicans hoped to pick up. They failed to do so, CNN projects. Republican State Senator Jen Kiggins has, however, flipped a Southern Virginia district. She defeated incumbent Congresswoman Elaine Luria, who serves on the January 6th committee. That is one of the Republican pickups they were hoping for this evening. Republican and emergency room Dr. Rich McCormick has, CNN projects, flipped the Georgia seat that was gerrymandered to become more Republican. He's a Marine veteran who served in Afghanistan. 
In addition, in New York, Republican Nicole Maliotakis has been reelected in New York's 11th congressional district, which includes Staten Island and part of Brooklyn. It was a rematch of her 2020 win over Democrat Max Rose. Let's look at the balance of power uh, right now in the U.S. House of Representatives. 81 Democrats in the House, 145 Republicans, including five pickups. There are 209 seats remaining to be called. You need 218 to control the U.S. House of Representatives. The state of play right now when it comes to those competitive seats. We've been telling you about these 82 competitive House seats all night. Democrats, uh, well, let's start with Republicans. Republicans need to win 23 of the outstanding competitive seats. Democrats need to win 51 of the outstanding competitive seats. Point. We now have uh, uh, some news from Boris uh, at the projecting desk for governors. That's right, Jake. A handful of projections to bring you, and in all of them, Republican victories beginning in Texas. Greg Abbott, uh, the incumbent Republican winning a third term, defeating former Congressman Beto O'Rourke. Meantime, in the state of Iowa, another incumbent Republican defeating the Democratic challenger Kim Reynolds there, winning re-election against small business owner Deidre DeGere. We also have a projection to bring you from the state of Nebraska, Jim Pillen, a veterinarian who defeated a Donald Trump-backed candidate in the Republican primary. He becomes the next governor of Nebraska, defeating state legislator Carol Blood. And no surprises in the state of Wyoming, a state that Donald Trump carried with some 70 percentage points in 2020. Mark Gordon, the incumbent Republican there, defeats Teresa Livingston, an Air Force veteran. Let's get you some key race alerts now. And in four of these key races, the Democrat is leading an election denier. First in Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, the incumbent Democrat. She builds on the lead uh, that she had when we last checked in on this race against Tudor Dixon now sitting 112,000 votes ahead with 30% of the vote in in the state of Michigan. An update now, Jake, from your home state, home Commonwealth maybe? Josh Shapiro, the attorney general there, 430,000 votes ahead of Doug Mastriano with 62% of the vote in. Meantime, our first look at the Arizona governor's race with this key race alert. Katie Hobbs, the secretary of state that helped certify the 2020 election results in Arizona. She's leading former TV anchor turned unrepentant election denier Carrie Lake, 184,000 votes, half of the vote in in the state of Arizona. Then in New York, a race that nobody expected would be as close as it was in polling right at the very end. Kathy Hochul, the incumbent Democrat, 647,000 votes in front of Lee Zeldin, who you may recall voted to object to certifying the election results in 2020 in the states of Arizona and Pennsylvania. Hochul holding on to a lead there. Let's get you a look at Georgia now, this race that we've been talking about all night. Incumbent Republican Brian Kemp, nearly 300,000 votes ahead of Stacey Abrams in this rematch from 2018. 82% of the vote in Georgia. Let's turn it over to Casey Hunt now. Casey, you have an update for us on some Senate races. We do, and we're going to start. Can you fill in the blank Maybe for me, Boris? Georgia. <laughs> we're going to start in Georgia, where Herschel Walker, again, I want to compare this directly to the number Boris just gave you, which was 54% for Kemp. Herschel Walker sitting at 49.6. That is considerably behind. But he is ahead of Raphael Warnock, the Democrat, who holds 48.5% right now. Again, this is so close. Neither one has 50%. We are potentially looking at a runoff, 83% of the vote in in Georgia. So let's check in on Wisconsin, which has been tightening over the past hour or so. Mandela Barnes, the Democrat, look, you saw it tighten right there on your screen. Now at exactly 50%, just 4,000 votes ahead of the incumbent Republican, Ron Johnson at 49.8%. Our friends at the Magic Wall are going to be able to give us a sense of what we, how we may see this move in the next couple of hours with 50% of the vote in in Wisconsin. Let's check in. On Jake Tapper's Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, also mine, John Fetterman, 49.8%, now below 50%. Mehmet Oz, 47.7%. This race really tightening up as we have been expecting all night. About 75,000 votes separate them right now. I think we can expect a really long time count in this race. 64% of the vote in, in Pennsylvania right now. And I do want to check in on Arizona because this has been a critical battleground as well. Mark Kelly, the incumbent Democrat, sitting at 58.1%. So he's got a comfortable early lead over Blake Masters, the Republican, at 39.6%. I do want to point out Katie Hobbs is sitting at 57% in the governor's race. So Kelly is slightly outperforming Hobbs. Potential to see a split on that race. Uh, there, of course, is only 50% of the vote in here. So we could see this tighten up throughout the night, Jake.
And welcome back. CNN has some projections for you now. They are three Republican Senate holes. In Iowa, CNN projects that Chuck Grassley, incumbent Senator Chuck Grassley, will defeat retired Admiral and Democrat Michael Franken. Chuck Grassley holds that seat. In Louisiana, Senator John Kennedy, Republican Senator incumbent, will defeat Gary Chambers, who you might remember he smoked a joint during a campaign ad. John Kennedy will hold on to that seat, CNN projects. And then in Missouri, the Attorney General, Eric Schmidt, will become the next U.S. Senator from the state of Missouri. He defeats heiress Trudy Bush Valentine. Let's take a look at the balance of power now in the U.S. Senate. You know it's 100 seats. Right now, Democrats have 40 of those seats. Republicans have 43. There are 17 seats remaining. That's what the rest of the night is about. In order to control the U.S. Senate, you need 50 seats plus one. Republicans need to pick up one net Democratic seat. All right, John King, thanks so much. And right now, polls are about to close in the political powerhouse of California, as well as three other states out west. And we have some projections for you now. Two for Democrats, one for a Republican in California. CNN is projecting that Senator Alex Padilla, who was appointed to that seat uh, after Kamala Harris became the vice president, that he will be elected senator from California, defe defeating Mark uh, Mosier. In Illinois, CNN is projecting that incumbent Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth will be reelected, defeating Kathy Salvi. And in Idaho, CNN is projecting that incumbent Republican Senator Mike Crapo will be reelected, defeating David Roth. States that are too early to call at this hour. In Washington state, incumbent Democratic Senator Patty Murray is running against a strong challenge from Tiffany Smiley, the Republican. That race right now, CNN deems it too early to call. In Oregon, uh, Senator Ron Wyden running for re-election. That race as well, too early to call. Let's look at the balance of power. As you know, there are 100 seats in the U.S. Senate. Democrats currently have 42 of them. Republicans currently have 44 of them. The fight over these 14 remaining seats is what we're going to be covering for the next few hours. Republicans need to pick up one net Democratic seat in order to wrest control of the U.S. Senate. We have some governor's races to report to you now. Let's go to Boris Sanchez. Jake, a handful of projections to make in all of them. The incumbent keeping the governor's mansion. We begin in California with Governor Gavin Newsom. Remember, he survived a recall election last year. There are whispers that he may be considering a presidential run in 2024. He easily defeats uh, election questioner Brian Dolly to win re-election in California. In the most expensive governor's race in the country, but perhaps one of the least competitive, incumbent Democrat billionaire J.B. Pritzker, who largely self-funded his own campaign, he defeats election denier Darren Bailey to win re-election in Illinois. Let's get a look at Maine now. There, the incumbent Democrat Janet Mills had a close race this summer with former two-time governor Paul LePage. But LePage fumbled a question about abortion rights during a debate, and Mills never looked back, maintaining an advantage in polling. Tonight, she wins another four years in Maine. This time in Idaho, the Republican incumbent, Brad Little, he will win re-election in a state that Donald Trump carried by some 60 percentage points in 2020. He defeats educator Stephen Hyde to win re-election in Idaho. Some key race alerts now to bring you, beginning in a true toss-up state in Wisconsin. Remember, Joe Biden won here by a very slim margin in 2020. Right now, Tony Evers leads by 62,000 votes ahead of election questioner Tim Michaels, 62% of the vote in, in the state of Wisconsin. We have an update for you now from Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer growing her lead against Tudor Dixon, the conservative commentator. 98,000 votes ahead, roughly 7 percentage point advantage for Whitmer, 33% of the vote in in Michigan. And what would a key race alert slew be without the state of Georgia? Brian Kemp, the Republican incumbent, 305,000 votes ahead right now of Stacey Abrams, about nine percentage points with 86% of the vote in in the state of Georgia. As we hand it over to Casey Hunt with an update on the senators' uh, races, I would be surprised if you didn't update us on Georgia. Your update would be useless if you didn't <laughs> have Georgia in there. Um, and of course, we are starting with Georgia yet again because. Look at these vote totals. 32,000 votes separate Herschel Walker from Raphael Warnock right now. It's actually a little bit bigger than it has been at some points throughout the night. But look at that, 49.4 to 48.5 percent. Again, nobody's over 50, heading to a potential runoff, 86 percent of the vote in. We can see this change back and forth still all night long as these votes get counted, folks. 
Uh, all right, let's move to Wisconsin, where Ron Johnson, the Republican, is sitting at 50.4 percent to Mandela Barnes, 49.4 percent. There's about 16,000 votes separating them. And we actually can compare this. What Boris just gave us in the governor's race showed Evers, the Democrat, ahead at 51.2 2 percent, uh, about 62,000 votes separating him from the Republican uh, at who is sitting at 47.4 percent. So you can, can see this is becoming another one of these examples where we are seeing a difference in terms of people potentially splitting uh, their tickets here. Now let's check in on Pennsylvania where John Fetterman, man, that's close, 49.5 to 48 percent over uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz here. So again, the question that I have when I look at this, and you know, Jake, of course, as we know, is from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But John King and David Chalion are going to know what kind of vote is still out, what we're looking at uh, in terms of is it Philadelphia that could give the Fetterman campaign some hope? Uh, still a long way to go there. Thirty percent of the vote still out. North Carolina. Let's just check in quickly. Ted Budd here, the Republican, sitting at fifty point eight percent. Uh, Sherry Beasley, the Democrat, at 46.9. There's about 143,000 votes separating them at this hour. So perhaps a pretty comfortable place to be when you're looking at 91% of the vote in. Reminder, this is currently a Republican seat. Republican Richard Burr is retiring, Jake. All right, Casey, thanks so much. And just a reminder, we're looking at 82 competitive House seats. That's really what we're looking at in order to determine whether or not Republicans are going to be able to wrest control of the House of Representatives. Of the 23 competitive seats that Republicans need to win in order to take control, they are currently leading in 17 of them, 17 out of 23. So that's pretty good. Let's take a look at the Democrats now. Democrats have a taller order on their hands. They need to win 50 of the 82 com competitive seats. Right now they're leading in 35 of them. So neither party is where they need to be. Uh, Republicans have a slightly uh, easier job to do in terms of what they need to do. Certainly not. And we have another big projection for you right now. CNN is projecting that in the state of New Hampshire, live free or die, Democratic incumbent Senator Maggie Hassan will be reelected, defeating retired General Don Bolduck. Maggie Hassan will be reelected, CNN is projecting. This is a seat that Republicans thought they could win. They thought they could defeat Hassan. They were very bullish. They were talking all week about momentum being their way. And in instead, Maggie Hassan, the Democratic senator, holds on to that seat CNN is projecting. Let's look at the balance of power right now in the U.S. Senate. You know, 100 seats. Democrats currently control 43 of those seats with the Hassan keeping her seat. Republicans have 44 of them. There are 13 seats remaining. Republicans need to pick up one net Democratic seat in order to wrest control of the U.S. Senate. Those 13 seats are what we are waiting to see to determine if they are able to achieve that. But there are governor's races, too, and we're going to go to Boris Sanchez with some major news there. Jake, there is a major projection we are making right now. Incumbent Republican Brian Kemp is projected to win re-election in the state of Georgia. This is a huge deal for Kemp. Remember, he drew Donald Trump's ire back in 2020 when he refused to find those 11,000 or so votes that Trump was looking for. Kemp, known for uh, restricting abortion access in Georgia, for remaking uh, the state's uh, voting system, the electoral system there. And of course, his defeat over Stacey Abrams stamps him uh, earning another uh, term in the state of Georgia. Let's turn it over now to Dana Bash. Yeah, Dana, another major projection just minutes uh, after the last one in the state of Pennsylvania. Josh Shapiro, the attorney general, will become the new governor of that state. Shapiro had a big lead in fundraising, a big lead in polls throughout. He continued to tie Doug Mastriano to Donald Trump, and it appears to have paid off. He takes over uh, the open seat left behind by uh, term-limited governor, governor Tom Wolf. Dana? That's right, Dana. We have a major projection right now. CNN is projecting that in Ohio, venture capitalist J.D. Vance will defeat Congressman Tim Ryan and be the next U.S. senator from the state of Ohio. J.D. Vance will be elected the next senator from Ohio, taking the place of retiring Republican Senator Rob Portman. The balance of power right now, 100 seats in the Senate, 43 of them belong to Democrats, 45 of them belong to Republicans, 12 seats remain. All Republicans need to do is pick up one net Democratic seat, and they will be able to wrest control of the U.S. Senate. Indeed.
And CNN now has two major projections. In North Carolina, CNN projects that Congressman Ted Budd will become the next U.S. Senator, defeating former North Carolina Supreme Court Justice Sherry Beasley. Ted Budd, endorsed by Donald Trump in this primary, and then Donald Trump in, uh, rallied for him throughout North Carolina. He will become the next U.S. Senator from North Carolina. In Connecticut, this one's no surprise, incumbent Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal will be reelected, defeating Republican Leora Levy. Let's take a look at the balance of power at this hour. As you know, 100 Senate votes. Democrats have 44 of them. Republicans have 46 of them. There are 10 seats remaining. 10 seats remaining. And CNN uh, reminds you, of course, that Republicans just need to pick up one net Republican seat and one net Democratic seat in order to take control of the U.S. Senate. So that's where we are, 44 4 to 46. And Casey Hunt has some announcements for us at the Senate desk. Uh, we do, Jake. And this really shows you, to John King's point, that we are getting down to the brass tacks here in the Senate as we try to figure out which way it's going to go, perhaps by one seat. And let's start, as always, in Georgia, where Herschel Walker has a very narrow lead over Raphael Warnock, just 15,000 votes, which is such a small amount considering the millions that have been cast. We've got 88% of the vote in there, election officials saying we might not know tonight. Pennsylvania, John Fetterman at 49.2%, Mehmet Oz at 48.3%, 37,000 votes separating them again among millions cast. And this race is one that we're going to be counting potentially for days here. And as John outlined, this is what will save Democrats if they lose that race out in Nevada, which Republicans are very confident about, and give them a shot to actually retain control. 75% of the vote in in Pennsylvania at this hour. Now let's check in on Wisconsin, which remains very close, 51% for the incumbent Ron Johnson over the Democrat Mandela Barnes at 48.8%. This remains very, very close. Mandela Barnes has been underperforming the Democratic Governor uh, Evers uh, so far tonight. Only about six, well, we're at 69% of the vote, so we've only got about 30% out of the, vote, of the vote outstanding. Now let's check in on Arizona, where Mark Kelly is sitting pretty comfortably right now, 58% over Blake Masters, the Republican, at 39.7%. That's a 240 or so thousand vote gap. I want to check in with John King and David Chalian to figure out what kind of votes are outstanding, because there's only about 50% of the vote in in Arizona, and we could see that tighten up. But now we're going to turn to Boris, who's got some critical updates on the governor's race. Yeah, Casey, it's really interesting, as you pointed out, the lead for the Republican in the Senate race in Wisconsin. As we get you a key race alert from that state, the Democratic incumbent in the governor's race is currently leading. Right now, Tony Evers, 43,000 votes ahead of election questioner Tim Michaels. It just changed. Now it's a 45,000 vote advantage with 69 percent of the vote in in Wisconsin. We want to update you on the state of Michigan right now. Gretchen Whitmer, nearly 90,000 votes ahead of conservative commentator Tudor Dixon. It just changed again. Now it's 88,000 votes. Uh, the lead slightly thinning there for Gretchen Whitmer with 39% of the vote in, in Michigan. In Kansas, perhaps the most vulnerable Democratic incumbent running for re-election, Laura Kelly, in a state that Donald Trump won by about 15 percentage points. She currently leads against Derek Schmidt, an election denier, 32,000 vote advantage for Laura Kelly with 83 percent of the vote in in Kansas. Meantime, the most unusual governor's race you're going to see on the map tonight, a three-way race between Tina Kotek, a Democrat, Christine Drazen, a Republican, and former Democrat turned independent Betsy Johnson, right now the Democrat in this race, with an 18,600 vote advantage, 53% of the vote in there. We send it back over to Jake Tapper. Jake. Thank you so much, Boris. And I just want to remind everybody of the competitive seats. There are 82 competitive seats. Republicans have to win 23 of them, and they are leading in 22 of them. So that's for control of the U.S. House. Republicans on their way. Of the 23 competitive seats they have to win, they're currently leading in 22. What about Democrats? What do Democrats have to do? They have to win 49 of the 82 competitive seats, 49 of them. And right now, they are leading in 42 of them. Not bad, but not as close as where the Republicans are. And I want you to take a look at some of these margins right now when it comes to these House races. In Oregon, Alex Garlatos is ahead by 0.08%. In Iowa, Zach Nunn up by 0.18%. In California, Congresswoman Michelle Steele up by 0.4%. In New York, Molinaro up 0.67%. In Arizona, 
Eli Crane up 1.38%. And Democrats, too, their leads are pretty narrow as well. We're looking at Kermit Jones up by 0.06% in California. And Tony Vargas up by 0.15% in Nebraska. Ryan, Congressman Ryan is up by 0.36% in New York. Tom Malinowski in New Jersey up by only 0.88%. And then Connecticut, Johanna Hayes up by 1.72%. These are competitive seats and the margins of victory right now are so narrow. That's right, John, and we have some more projections for you for the U.S. Senate. CNN projects in Washington State incumbent Democratic Senator Patty Murray will hold on to her seat, defeating a challenge from Republican Tiffany Smiley. Patty Murray, Senator Patty Murray, re-elected, CNN projects. And then just south of Washington, in Oregon, CNN projects that incumbent Democratic Senator Ron Wyden will defeat a challenge from Joe Ray Perkins. So that's two Democratic seats held on. Where does that leave us in the balance of power? Obviously, you know, 100 seats. Right now, we have Democrats with 46 of them, Republicans with 46 of them, eight seats remaining. Remember, Republicans just need to pick up one net Democratic seat in order to wrest control of the U.S. Senate. Right now, it's 46-46. Yeah, Jake, two important projections to bring you, beginning with the race in New York. This race got very close in polling at the end. But in actuality, when the votes were counted, it wasn't very close at all. Incumbent Democrat Kathy Hochul winning her first full term in office. She took over, of course, for disgraced former Governor Andrew Cuomo after he resigned. She defeats Congressman Lee Zeldin to win a first full term in the state of New York. Next, an update for you from the state of Minnesota. Tim Waltz, the incumbent Democrat, projected to win re-election there against Scott Jensen, a physician who made some... Uh, dubious claims about the COVID-19 vaccine to Democratic incumbents holding on to the governor's mansion in those two states as we turn it over to Dana Bash, who has some analysis for us. Dana? Yeah, or at least not a negative night for them, not yeah. the kind they were fearing. We have projections for you now, uh, and five of them are for Democrats uh, winning, and one is for a Republican winning. In Tennessee, Republican Andy Ogles, a former mayor and conservative think tank executive, has flipped a seat in Tennessee. It is a Nashville area district that got much more Republican after redistricting. Democrat Greg Landsman has flipped a seat in Ohio. This is a surprise and a big win for Democrats. He beat longtime incumbent Republican Steve Shabbat. This congressional district includes Cincinnati and became a lot bluer after redistricting. Democrat Marcy Kaptur in Ohio, one of the longest serving members of the House, has been reelected in Ohio. She defeated a far right Trump supporter who was at or near the Capitol on January 6th. That's after her district was made more Republican. She won anyway. Ohio State Legislator Amelia Sykes has won an open seat for Democrats in northern Ohio. It's a swing district that Biden won by three. Kansas Democrat Sharice Davids has won a third term. She's one of the first two Native American women to serve in Congress. That is a tough congressional district. It's a battleground district. She has been reelected. Rhode Island State Treasurer Seth Magaziner has held on to an open seat for Democrats. It's a district Biden won by 14. Republicans thought they could pick it off in a wave year. Apparently, it's not the year they thought they were going to have. Let's look at the balance of power right now in the House of Representatives. Democrats have 155 House seats, including one pickup. Republicans have 184 House seats, including six pickups. 96 seats remain. The magic number 218. In terms of the state of play, looking at the competitive seats we told you at the beginning of the night, we were keeping an eye on and watching pretty much determine who was going to be able to control the House of Representatives. Republicans have to win 22 competitive seats. Democrats have to win 44 competitive seats. And right now, we're taking a look at those competitive seats and counting the votes and trying to figure out who is actually going to win. Welcome back to Election Night in America. We have some CNN projections for you for some House races. In Texas, the 34th Congressional District, Congressman Vicente Gonzalez defeats Mayra Flores. Vicente Gonzalez is the winner in that race in Texas. In Illinois' 13th Congressional District, Democrat Nikki Budzinski has flipped an open seat that was gerrymandered to become more blue. She's a former Biden administration official. She will defeat Regan Deering. And then in New Jersey's 7th Congressional District, Republican Thomas Kane Jr. has defeated incumbent Congressman Tom Milanowski. 
Malinowski uh, is the incumbent, Kane Jr., the former New Jersey Senate Republican leader, and also son of the former New Jersey governor and chair of the 9-11 Commission, Tom Kane. Let's look at the balance of power right now. 218 seats are needed to control the House of Representatives, 165 seats. The Democrats have 165, including two pickups. Republicans have 190 seats, including seven pickups, 80 seats remaining right now. The state of play right now when it comes to those competitive seats, those 82 competitive seats we've been looking at the entire night. Republicans need to win 21 of them. Democrats need to win 40 of them. So Republicans have an easier task ahead of them. Uh, let's look at these other two uh, races right now that are very interesting as votes are coming in. In Colorado's seventh and third congressional district, Lauren Boebert, the incumbent Republican congresswoman, a, a firebrand, some would say an extremist, is currently losing. She's 8,551 votes behind her Democratic challenger, Adam Frisch, with 80% of the vote in. That is a surprising result as of now. It is not the end. We're still looking at the votes. They're still counting them. And then in New York, at the 17th congressional district, Sean Maloney, who is the, in addition to being an incumbent congressman, he is the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. He is losing with 85% of the vote in to Michael Lawler, a local state representative. We also have some governor's races for you right now. Or Sanchez has those. Jake, we have a pair of projections to bring you both of them Democratic holds. First, in the state of New Mexico, incumbent Democrat Michelle Lujan Grisham, the only Latina governor in the United States, she defeats former TV weatherman Mark Ronchetti for another four years in New Mexico. In the state of Connecticut, another Democratic win. Uh, incumbent Democrat Ned Lamont winning his rematch against Bob Stefanowski. This race decided by three percentage points last time around, a much bigger margin this time, securing another four years for Ned Lamont. Let's take a look at some key race alerts now. Four races where Democrats are defeating either election deniers or election questioners, starting with Arizona. Katie Hobbs right now, 172,000 votes ahead of Kerry Lake, 52% of the vote in in Arizona. Let's get an update now from Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer, the incumbent Democrat, 133,000 votes ahead of conservative commentator Tudor Dixon, 62% of the vote in in Michigan. As we take a look at Wisconsin, a very close race there. Joe Biden won this state by only about 20,000 votes last time. That's roughly the advantage that incumbent Democrat Tony Evers has right now, about 25,000 votes ahead of Tim Michaels with 83% of the vote in in Wisconsin. We also have an update to bring you in the state of Kansas. This race, very, very close. Incumbent Democrat Laura Kelly, uh, perhaps the most vulnerable uh, incumbent Democrat on the entire map, 24,000 votes ahead right now of Derek Schmidt with 86% of the vote in in Kansas. And we have a bonus projection to bring you. In a Secretary of State race in Georgia, this guy became a household name after the 2020 election. Brad Raffensperger caught on tape as Donald Trump tried to convince him to find 11,000 votes in the Peach State. Raffensperger refused. Donald Trump made him a target, but he wins re-election as the Secretary of State in Georgia. Let's turn it over to Casey Hunt now. You've got an update for us on Senate races, Casey. Yes, and we are going to start, as we always have, it seems, this evening in that same state, which is Georgia. I, Raphael Warnock has actually ticked into the lead here, but, man, look how close this is. 12,631 votes right now of literally millions. You can see it on the screen, separating Warnock from Walker. Again, both under 50%. Question remains, can someone get to the point where they avoid a runoff or are we looking at four more weeks of this fight that we have seen 94 percent of the vote in in Georgia let's check in now on Pennsylvania which is turning out to be our other linchpin John Fetterman 49.2 percent Mehmet Oz 48.3 percent you heard Jake and John King really breaking down where some of the votes are out here Fetterman seems to be outperforming what Biden did in some of the rural counties but we're still waiting on those big numbers in counties like Philadelphia 88 percent of the vote in, but this really could be where the, the Senate uh, hinges. Now let's take a look at Wisconsin. Ron Johnson sitting at 51.6%. Uh, he is doing better than the Republican gubernatorial candidate, and Mandela Barnes is underperforming the sitting governor, uh, Tony Evers, 51.6% to 48.2% for this race, still very close, but Johnson right now doing what he needs to do with 83% of the vote in here. 
Now let's check in on Arizona, where Mark Kelly is sitting at 57.2%. Pretty comfortable lead over Blake Masters, who's got 40.5%. It's tightened a little bit since the last time we took a look at this. We really need to know where we're still waiting on votes to fully understand what this means at this hour of the night. We've got 53% of the vote in in Arizona, Jake. That's right, John, because CNN has a major projection. CNN projects that Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman will be the next U.S. Senator from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. This is a pickup. Retiring Senator Pat Toomey is a Republican, and the Democrats are now taking that Senate seat back. Again, CNN is projecting that John Fetterman will be the next U.S. Senator from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And look, we're going to watch as the people in Fetterman headquarters get that news uh, in one second. In any case, to bring us up to speed in the balance of power, 100 Senate seats. Democrats have 47 of them, including one pickup. Republicans have 46 of them. Seven seats remain. Republicans need to pick up one net Democratic seat. Right now, they're not there. And Democrats just picked up one Republican seat. Yeah, Anderson, an important projection to bring you from the state of Wisconsin in that governor's race. This state was decided by only about 20,000 votes in the last presidential election. As it stands right now, Tony Evers, the incumbent Democrat, <clears throat> excuse me, has tripled, nearly tripled that total. He stands to win re-election in the state of Wisconsin, defeating Republican Tim Michaels. We also have some key race alerts to bring you, beginning with the state of Arizona. There, Secretary of State Katie Hobbs is leading... The unrepentant election denier, Carrie Lake, 164,000 votes with 54% of the vote in in the state of Arizona. Let's take a look at Nevada now. Steve Sisolak, a very vulnerable Democratic incumbent. Right now, he stands 43,000 votes ahead of the sheriff of Clark County, Joe Lombardo, 44% of the vote in in the state of Nevada. Let's get another look at Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer has steadily been building this lead every time we've checked in on this race. She now stands 187,000 votes ahead of conservative commentator Tudor Dixon, 71% of the vote in in the state of Michigan. We take a look now at the state of Kansas. This is perhaps the reddest state in which a Democrat uh, gubernatorial candidate was running for re-election. Laura Kelly, 22,000 votes ahead of Derek Schmidt, who questioned the results of the 2020 election. 87% of the vote in in Kansas. Let's send it over to Jake Tapper and John King at the Magic Wall. We can now uh, make a projection in the Senate race in Utah. CNN is projecting that incumbent Republican Senator Mike Lee will be reelected by the good citizens of Utah. He defeats independent candidate Evan McMullen. Let's look at the balance of power in the Senate right now. 100 seats, 47 of them belong to the Democrats, including one pickup. In Pennsylvania, 47 of them belong to the Republicans. There are six seats remaining. Republicans need to win two net Democratic seats in order to win control of the U.S. Senate. We have governor's races for you to talk about now as well. Boris Sanchez has that. Yeah, Jake, a big projection for CNN. We are projecting that Gretchen Whitmer, the incumbent Democrat in the state of Michigan, will win re-election. She made abortion rights the centerpiece of her campaign. She filed a lawsuit to stop a 1931 abortion ban that took effect after the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade in the Dobbs decision. She also introduced legislation in that state to expand and protect abortion access. It pays off for her as she defeats Tudor Dixon, a Trump-endorsed election denier, Jake. All right, Boris Sanchez, thanks so much. And we can now make projections in three states that have ballot measures on abortion. CNN projects that Californians have voted yes on establishing a state constitutional right to an abortion. Voters in Michigan have approved a similar ballot measure, saying yes to abortion rights. The trend is holding in Vermont, another yes vote to ensure the right to an abortion. And take a look at Kentucky, a measure that would amend the state constitution to explicitly state that there is no Kentucky constitutional right to an abortion. That is trailing as of right now. Now, thanks, Dana. That's right. CNN has a projection for you right now. CNN projects that Senator Brian Schatz of Hawaii, the Democrat, will be reelected, defeating Republican Bob McDermott. Let's bring the balance of power on that right now because we've just added a seat to the Democrats. Democrats, there's 100 seats in the U.S. Senate. Democrats have 48 of them, including a pickup in a Republican seat. That's Pennsylvania. 
Republicans have 47. In order for Republicans to wrest control of the U.S. Senate from the Democrats, they now need to win two net Democratic seats. Two net Democratic seats. Uh, Casey Hunt, we go to you now with more on the battle for the Senate. Well, Jake, we can walk through what the possibilities are for Republicans right now and what they aren't. Let's start in Georgia, where Raphael Warnock is still barely ahead of Herschel Walker, the Republican. So this is one where, again, if this holds, we're looking at four more weeks of fighting. This could, of course, go either way under those kinds of circumstances. It could all come down to the race here, depending on what happens on the rest of the map. 96% of the vote in there. And let's look at what else is out. Wisconsin, Ron Johnson, the incumbent, sitting at 50.7. This has been pretty steady here as the vote has continued to roll in, that this margin is about the same. Mandela Barnes at 49.1%. We obviously have called the Wisconsin governor's race for the Democrat, uh, but Ron Johnson is on a different path right now with 80% of the vote in there. Let's check in on Nevada, where, of course, Democrats have been pessimistic, or at least they were at the beginning of the night, but obviously their optimism has increased as results have rolled in through the evening. Catherine Cortez Masto currently at 53.3% to the Republican. Adam Laxalt, 44%. We have 53% of the vote in here in Nevada. A lot of questions about whether it's mail or, or how that's all coming in. We're going to have to go to John King and David Chalian for some of those answers. So let's check in on Arizona, where Mark Kelly sitting comfortably ahead of the Republican Blake Masters at 57.2% to Blake Masters 40.5%. If this kind of lead can hold, Democrats can hold there. We're looking at that trio of races, Nevada and uh, Georgia, perhaps Wisconsin, uh, as this night uh, gets later and later, Jake. All right, we are back, everyone. I'm Don Lemon. This is CNN's special live coverage of election night in America. Both chambers of Congress up for grabs at this hour. And just in, we have CNN projections in the House. We're going to take you straight away to the 15th district, Texas's 15th district. Look, it's there on your wall. Republicans have picked up a seat. Monica De La Cruz has defeated the Democrat there has defeated the Democrat in Texas. In Iowa, the second congressional district Republican, Ashley Henson, has won, defeating Liz Mathis. The Republicans holding on to that seat in Iowa. Ashley Henson winning right now. In Minnesota's second district, Democrat, Democratic Angie Craig has defeated Rep Republican Tyler Kistner there. This is a hold for Democrats. Democrats hang on to that seat in Minnesota. This is now North Carolina's 13th district that you're looking at. Democrat Wiley Nickel has won over Republican Bo Hines. Wiley Nichols defeats Republican Bo Hines. This is a Democratic pickup there. Take it to Pennsylvania. This is the 8th district. Incumbent Democrat Matt Cartwright has held his seat. And in that state, 17th district, another hole for Democrats there. Uh, Chris Bellazio has defeated Republican Jeremy Schaffer. Jeremy Schaefer, excuse me, defeated Jeremy Schaefer there. So I want you to take a look at the balance of power now. The balance of power, Republicans getting closer and closer to that magic number of 218, but they're not there yet, and we still have lots of runway to go. And another CNN projection just in. That sin in projection is in Alaska. Alaska will remain a Republican stronghold. This is a seat held by incumbent Lisa Murkowski. We cannot yet declare an exact winner because the state uses rank choice voting. So that's what's happening in Alaska. That is the balance of power now uh, in the House. We're going to continue to check in uh, with the balance of power in the House. Also, as well, the balance of power in the Senate. Hello, everyone. Don Lemon here. This is continuing coverage of CNN's Election Night in America, and we have a CNN projection. So here we go. Democrat Josh Green will be Hawaii's next governor. He is a projected winner. He's going to hold as a Democrat there. That is a hold for Democrats in Hawaii. And there you see it. There's a CNN projection, and it is in Michigan's seventh. Alyssa Slotkin, a Democrat there, has won re-election in Michigan's seventh congressional over Tom Barrett. This was a tight race. 
Republicans had hoped to pick up. They did not. The Democrats will hang on there. And you may also remember Republican Liz Cheney campaigned for Alyssa Slotkin in Michigan. And Alyssa Slotkin uh, is the projected winner there. And Oregon's fourth district Democrat Val Hoyle wins another hold for Democrats there. Another hold for Democrats uh, in Oregon. Now let's take you now to the balance of power. See where the balance of power is happening now in the House of Representatives. Republicans remain in the lead, but it is tight. They remain in the lead with 195. Uh, 218, obviously, is the one that's needed. That's the magic number. Democrats, 176. They picked up three. Uh, Republicans, eight pickups so far. Okay, so this is a CNN projection. CNN can project that five additional House races here, five additional House races. First, we're going to go to Iowa. Uh, that will be a Republican hole there. That is where uh, Marionette Miller Meeks will win over the Democrat, Christina Bohannon. And then in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin 3, we have a Republican pickup with Derek Van Orden beating out Democrat Brad Pfaff. In New York's House race uh, 2, we have a GOP hold with Republican Andrew Garbarino defeating Jackie Gordon. And New Hampshire won. We have a Democratic hold there. Incumbent Chris Pappas winning over Caroline Levitt. Also in New Hampshire, the Democrat there, Ann Custer, in District 2, holds that seat against Republican Robert Burns. Robert Burns there. Pappas will hold on. Okay, so listen. Uh, let's talk about the balance of power. Okay, Republicans are getting closer, but they are still short of 218. That is the magic number. Democrat Laura Kelly has won re-election for governor in Kansas. Her Republican opponent supported the 2022 failed state constitutional amendment to take away the right to an abortion. Let's take a look at the numbers. Here's where uh, we stand on governors, governorships across the country. Even with the Nevada and Arizona results coming in, there's a chance it could be another month until we know which party controls the Senate, thanks to Georgia. Let's check in with John here at the Magic Wall. Welcome back. We have a CNN projection. We are now able to call three House races in Michigan. The Democrat Hillary Shulton has won her race for the 3rd District, defeating Republican John Gibbs. That is a pickup for the Democrats. In Nebraska's 2nd District, Don Bacon, the GOP incumbent, has won re-election, holding that seat for Republicans. And in New York's 3rd District, George Santos, the Republican wins, which is a pickup for the Republican Party. I want to go over to John Burtman at the Magic Wall. And welcome back to our special live coverage. We have several CNN projections to bring you. Brittany Peterson, the Democrat, has defeated her Republican opponent to become the representative for Colorado's 7th District. Also in North Carolina, Don Davis, a Democrat, has defeated Republican Sandy Smith. That's a hold for Democrats. In Pennsylvania, Democrat Chrissy Houlihan has defeated her Republican opponent as well. All of these races are Democrat holes. Two-term Republican Senator Ron Johnson has defeated his Democrat opponent, Mandela Barnes, to become the senator for Wisconsin. This has turned out to be one of the year's most competitive races. Johnson, a close ally of former President Trump, is known for a history of controversial statements, including misinformation about the COVID-19 pandemic and false statements about the January 6th Capitol attack. Let's take a look at how this impacts the balance of power in the Senate. This would give Republicans 49 to Democrats 48 in the Senate. We have several uh, CNN projections. Florida Democrat Jared Moskowitz has defeated Republican Joe Budd to become the representative for Florida's 23rd district. That is a Democratic hold in Indiana. Democrat Frank Mervin has defeated his Republican opponent, Jennifer Ruth Green, another seat Democrats will keep. And finally, New York Republican Nicholas uh, Lalota has held that seat for the GOP, defeating his Democratic opponent, Bridget Fleming. That race held in a newly redrawn district. All right, uh, we're ready to uh, make a projection right now. All right, here you see it. Uh, in uh, the state of Maryland, CNN now projects that the incumbent Dutch Rupersberger will be re-elected in Maryland, an important win in, in the contest there in Maryland. Uh, there's another projection we're ready, ready to make right now as well. In Michigan, Dan Kildee, the incumbent uh, Democratic uh, representative, he will also be re-elected. We are now ready to project, John. The House of Representatives 
uh, is, uh, is, is really important uh, right now because it's close. Herschel Walker, very, very close. Let's take a look at the latest numbers. We're up on the screen if we can. There you see 49.2% for Raphael Warnock, 48.7% for Herschel Walker, the Libertarian candidate, with 2.1%. If you don't get 50% plus one, there's going to be a runoff on December 6th. It looks like certainly there's going to be a runoff right now. Even though it's so, so tight, they're both just below 50% right now in Georgia. Uh, we also have uh, some projections that we're going to release right now. All right, in uh, the state of Arizona, CNN is not projecting that Eli Crane, uh, the Republican, will be elected uh, to the House of Representatives uh, from uh, Arizona. This is uh, the Arizona's district number two. Eli Crane looks like he's going to be the next representative from Arizona right now. Uh, that's one projection. We have another projection from Pennsylvania right now as well. Let's get that up on the screen if we can. Yeah, there you see it, uh, Susan Wilde. Uh, the uh, Democratic uh, incumbent, she is going to be reelected. We cannot project, uh, even though it says too early to call, we're projecting that Susan Wilde uh, will be the winner, defeating uh, Lisa Schell Scheller as well. Let's go over to John King uh, at the uh, Magic Wall. So we've got two more projections in the House of Representatives. So set the scene for us uh, what that says to you. Uh, we have a projection just coming into CNN right now. In Michigan, the 10th District, Michigan 10, uh, Republican, Republican John James, uh, we project, is the winner in that district. It's a district that's been uh, redistricted uh, because of the population changes, but uh, it's another Republican win. Let's take a look at the balance of power as it stands right now going into uh, these final days uh, uh, before the, uh, the new Congress comes back. Uh, right now, uh, the balance of power shows 204 Republicans to 187 Democrats, 44 seats still uh, remain outstanding. You need 218 to be the majority in the House of Representatives. But once again, uh, uh, the Congressman-elect John James wins Michigan 10, another Republican win in the U.S. House of Representatives. And we have some projections for you. A huge win for Republicans in New York. Republican State Assemblyman Michael Lawler has defeated CNN Projects. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. Maloney ran the House Democrats campaign committee this year. Sean Patrick Maloney conceded earlier today. CNN is now officially making a projection. This is a suburban district that Biden won by 10 points. And the first time a campaign chairman like this has been defeated since 1980. New York Republican and former NYPD detective Anthony D'Esposito has also flipped a Long Island district that Biden won by nearly 15 points. So let us uh, go now to the balance of power. Right now, 100, uh, Democrats have 187 seats. That includes four pickups. Republicans have 206 seats. That includes 14 pickups. The magic number, of course, 218 seats are needed to have control. Uh, we are still waiting for a number of other uh, districts to be called, and we will bring those to you when we do this. The state of play right now in the U.S. House, Republicans need to win nine of the outstanding competitive seats, and they're leading in 13 of them. Nine, and they're leading in 13. Democrats need to win 24 of the outstanding competitive seats, and they're leading in 19 of them. Welcome back. We have a new projection to make in the race for the U.S. House of Representatives. Republican Mark Molinaro is the winner in a sprawling New York district that includes Binghamton and Ithaca. He's currently the Dutchess County Executive. That is a pickup for Democrats. Let's look at the balance of power right now. Right now, Democrats control 187 seats in the House, including four pickups. Republicans control 207 seats. That's 15 pickups. So that's Molinaro, Molinaro just uh, improved that number, 207. 41 seats are outstanding, the magic number, 218. Of the competitive seats that are out there, Republicans need to win eight. Eight. Democrats need to win 24. A much taller order for Democrats right now. We do have a new projection to make in the House of Representatives battle. Democrat Eric Sorensen, CNN is projecting, has held on to an open seat in Illinois. Sorensen is, is a former local TV weatherman, and he will be Illinois' first openly gay 
member of Congress. Also some key race alerts in Colorado. Look at the nail biter between firebrand Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert and Democrat Adam Frisch, a former city council member. The difference here is just 73 votes with about 95% of the votes having been reported. In Washington state, Democratic incumbent Congresswoman Kim Schreier is hanging on to her seat, at least so far, against the challenge from Republican attorney Matt Larkin, 52.8% to 46.9%. But we are not ready to make a projection there. Let's look at the balance of power right now. In the U.S. House, Democrats have 188 House seats. That includes four pickups. Republicans have 207 House seats, including 15 pickups. There are 40 seats remaining. The magic number there, of course, 218. Republicans are narrowing in on that magic number. What's the state of play when it comes to competitive races? Let's take a look right now. The state of play is, there we go, Republicans need to win the eight competitive seats in order to become the controlling party of the House of Representatives. Democrats, a taller order, they have to pick up 23 competitive seats in order to hold on to control of power. Welcome back, and we have a new projection to make in the race for the U.S. House of Representatives in Iowa. CNN projects that Republican State Senator Zach Nunn has succeeded in ousting Democratic incumbent Congresswoman Cindy Axney in a purple district that Trump won by less than half a percentage point in 2020. More now on the Senate. Let's go to the balance of power right now. In the House of Representatives, 188 Democrats have been elected. That includes four pickups. Republicans have 208 seats. That includes 16 pickups. 39 seats remain to be called. And there are 218 seats that you need to have to win control of Congress. The state of play right now in terms of the outstanding competitive seats, Republicans need to win seven of them. Democrats have a taller order. They need to win 23 of the competitive seats. Anderson. And we're back with our election coverage, our midterm election coverage, and a new projection that CNN can reveal right now. In New York, Democratic Congressman Pat Ryan has been re-elected, CNN projects. Ryan is an Army veteran who's been in Congress for just a few months. He won a special election in August. Now let's turn to a controversial member of Congress. Uh, but before we do that, let us give you the balance of power right now. And the balance of power... The Democrats have 189 seats. That includes four pickups. And Republicans have 208 seats. That includes 16 pickups. 38 seats remain. Needed to control the magic number, of course, 218. The state of play right now when it comes to those competitive House seats that we have not yet called. Democrats need to win 22 of them in order to win or keep control of the House of Representatives. Republicans need to just win seven of the competitive seats that are outstanding. And we have a CNN projection in California. Republican Representative Jay Obernolte wins re-election against the, the Democrat uh, Derek Marshall. Obernolte was first elected in 2020, and Marshall was a staffer for Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign. Take a look at where the balance of power stands now. Democrats now have 189 House seats. Republicans now up to 209, nine short of the 218 needed to win control of the House. 37 seats remain undecided. More votes are in. It's time to make another projection in the House of Representatives. In California, Democratic Congressman incumbent Raul Ruiz, who was first elected in 2012, CNN projects, he is going to win his re-election against Republican Brian Hawkins, a pastor and a city councilman. In Washington State's 10th congressional district, CNN projects the Democratic Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland will win re-election against her Republican challenger, Keith Swank. Strickland first won her seat in 2020. She's the former mayor of Tacoma. Swank is an Army veteran and Seattle police officer. Let's take a look now at the balance of power in the House of Representatives. Right now, Democrats have 191 seats. They've picked up four. Republicans have 209. They've picked up 16. 35 seats remain. The 218 is the magic number, as we know. Republicans only have to win a few more seats to win control of the House of Representatives. What about those outstanding competitive seats? Well, Democrats need to win 22 of them. 22 of them. 
Republicans have to win only seven of them. So things still seem to be progressing towards Republicans taking over the House of Representatives by a narrow margin. All right, everyone, we have a CNN projection. Take a look right here in the House. Democratic Congresswoman Johanna Hayes has just defeated Republican George Logan. This is a hold for Democrats. Let's take a closer look at what the numbers then mean for the balance of power. Right now, you see the Democrats pick up one more seat, which is 192 Democrats in the House of Representatives, 209 Republicans, the threshold, of course, remaining to gain control of the House of Representatives at 218. We can now make projections in House races. These are uh, unusual races because they feature Democrats against Democrats due to California's open primary system. So we know a Democrat will win. CNN can project uh, that Democrat Sidney uh, Kemlager will win. A California state the senator will defeat Democrat Jan Perry, a former Los Angeles City Councilwoman. Also in California's 15th and 34th congressional districts, we can also say a Democrat will win. We don't know uh, yet which one, though. This means we can move three more House seats over to Democrats, bringing the balance of power to 195 Democrats right now and 209 Republicans. So let's take a look at the state of play where things stand right now uh, on this election night in America continued. Right now, Democrats must win 21 competitive seats to maintain their majority in the House. Republicans must win seven competitive seats to win their majority in the U.S. House of Representatives. We have two projections to make in the U.S. House of Representatives right now in California's 40th district, a Republican Congresswoman Young Kim has won a second term in office. She was first elected in 2020 and was one of the first Korean American women elected to the U.S. Congress. Our other new projection right now, Montana Republican Ryan Zinke is coming back to Congress. He served two years in the House before joining the Trump cabinet as the Interior Secretary. He will now be heading back to the House of Representatives. With these two new CNN projections, Republicans have, have won 211 seats. They're just seven away from taking over control, the majority in the House of Representatives. All right, we have two projections to make right now. Democratic incumbent Dina Titus reelected in a Las Vegas area district. Republicans had seen this as a potential, potentially big pickup opportunity. She's reelected though, according to our projection. Uh, uh, in uh, Nevada, Democratic Congressman Stephen Horsford re-elected in Nevada's 4th District as well. So let's take a closer look at the state of play for control of the House right now. Uh, there you see it right now. Right now, the Democrats have 197 Democrats, 211 Republicans. The Democrats have four pickups so far. The Republicans, 16 pickups, 27 seats remaining right now. Let's go over to John King. Right now, we have a brand new CNN projection to make for control of the U.S. House of Representatives. Democrat Kim Schreier has won a third term to represent the 8th District in Washington State. She's a former pediatrician. We do have a new CNN projection to bring you. In Maryland, the Democrat David Throne ha, defeated Neil Parrott, the Republican there. It is a Democratic hold. CNN now projects the winner in Oregon's governor's race, Democrat Tina Kotek, defeating Republican Christine Drazen, who uh, has just conceded uh, defeat. Obviously, a, uh, a win for the uh, for, for Tina Kotek and for the Democrats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Great analysis. <laughs> right now, we're ready to make a new projection. Uh, this is in Nevada's uh, third district, where Democrat Susie Lee has been re-elected to a third term in a district in the southernmost tip of the state. Democrats have now won 200 seats to the Republicans' 211 seats. There are still 24 House seats left to call. We have a major projection to make right now. CNN can project that Republican Joe Lombardo will be the next governor of Nevada. Lombardo defeats Democratic incumbent Steve Sisolak. CNN is now ready to make two new projections in races for the House of Representatives. 
Democrat incumbent Congressman uh, Ami Vera will win his re-election to represent California's 6th district. And another new projection coming in right now in California's 26th district, Democratic Congresswoman Julia Bronley has won a sixth term in office representing Ventura County. Let's take a closer look at the balance of power where things stand right now. As of right now, Democrats have now won 202 seats to the Republicans' 222 House seats still left the call. Remember, 218 seats. That's the majority. That's the magic number right now. All right, John, thanks very much. We can now make a major projection in the fight for the U.S. Senate. CNN now projects that Democratic Senator Mark Kelly wins re-election in Arizona, pulling off a critical victory for his party, the former astronaut defeating the Trump-endorsed Republican Blake Masters in one of the most closely watched Senate races in the nation. Again, CNN projects Senator Mark Kelly wins re-election in Arizona. That means Democrats and Republicans now have won 49 Senate seats each. But Democrats are closer than Republicans to winning Senate control right now. They need only one more seat to lock up a Senate majority because the Vice President Kamala Harris has the tie-breaking vote. Very dramatic development right now. Dana, over to you. Anderson, thank you. We have another major projection to make right now in Arizona once again. CNN projects that Democrat Adrian Fontes wins the race to become Arizona's Secretary of State. Fontes defeating Republican Mark Fincham, an election denier who attended the rally outside the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and is also a self-proclaimed member of the radical right-wing group, the Oath Keepers. Once again, CNN projects that Democrat Adrian Fontes wins as Arizona's Secretary of State. And we can now make a new projection. CNN projects Democrat Greg Stanton is re-elected to a third term in Arizona in a Tempe-based district that Biden carried by 10 points. Take a look at the balance of power in the House where it stands right now. Democrats inching up to 203 seats, Republicans holding at 211 seats. That's seven short of the 218 seats needed to win control of the House. But Democrats continuing to make gains tonight. Let's go over to John King. We have a, a, a projection to make right now. Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez has flipped a seat in Washington state. She beat Joe Kent, uh, a Trump endorsed election denier who defeated uh, Jamie Herrera Butler uh, in the primary. She was one of the 10 Republicans to vote to impeach Trump. All right, hold on for one moment. As a result of these new numbers, right now we have a huge projection to make. Look at this. Uh, projection in the high stakes battle for the United States Senate. CNN now projects that Democrats will keep control of the United States Senate, holding on to the majority they narrowly, narrowly won two years ago. This is an extraordinary victory for the Democrats as the battle for control of the House continues to play out. We are making this call because we can now project that Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto will win re-election in Nevada. Cortez Masto defying expectations and beating back a very strong challenge from Republican Adam Laxalt. Once again, CNN projects that Senator Catherine Cortez Masto wins re-election, sealing the Democrats' control of the United States Senate for another two years. Right, everybody stand by. CNN is now ready to project another key victory for the Democrats in Nevada. CNN now projects that Cisco Aguilar will win the race for Secretary of State, defeating Republican Jim Merchant. He refused to accept the results of the 2020 presidential race. Aguilar will replace the Republican incumbent who could not seek re-election due to term limits. Very important development indeed. We're watching all of this so closely. We'll have much more on tonight's major breaking news, the CNN projection that Democrats will keep control of the United States Senate. It's election night in America. Continue. Stay with us. Right now, CNN has a projection to make in the House of Representatives. In Oregon's 5th Congressional District, CNN can project that Republican Lori chavez Dreamer will beat Democrat Jamie McLeod Skinner. Now, chavez Dreamer has 51% of the vote to almost 49% for McLeod Skinner. McLeod Skinner has just conceded. 
Now, this is a pickup for Republicans. The balance of power in the House is 212 for Republicans to Democrats, 204. Now, Republicans need to win six of the remaining seats to take control of the House. It's still early to call who will control the House of Representatives. And in Arizona, new vote totals were just released a short time ago. They show a tightening in one of the most watched governor's races in the country. Trump firebrand Kerry Lake has cut into the lead held by Democrat Katie Hobbs. We have a CNN projection to bring you. And CNN can now project the winner in the Arizona governor's race is Democrat Katie Hobbs defeating Republican Kerry Lake. I want to go right to uh, our panel, David Oxrod, Scott Jennings, and Audie Cornish. Uh, Audie, what's your reaction to this? We have these two new projections coming just moments ago here to CNN. We can project that in Arizona, Republican David Schweikert has been reelected in a district that Joe Biden narrowly carried in 2020. He is now the first elected in the Tea Party wave. He was elected in the Party wave back in 2010. We also have another projection from CNN where businessman Brandon Williams has won an open seat. Now, in Arizona, CNN projects Juan Siskamani will win the sixth district uh, house seat there. And uh, his win against uh, Democrat Kirsten Engel gives Republicans a total of 215 seats in the House. And CNN can now make two significant projections impacting the balance of power in the House of Representatives in California. Republican Congresswoman Michelle Steele, CNN projects, has won re-election to a second term. She's a Republican. She was one of the first Korean Americans ever elected to Congress. In New Mexico, it's a pickup for the Democrats. Former Las Cruces City Councilman Gabriel Vasquez has defeated incumbent Evett Harrell. This win helps keep Democrats slim chances of retaining the House in place, the Republicans are still favored. Let's take a look now at the new balance of power in the House of Representatives. Right now, of the 218 seats needed for a House majority, Democrats have 205 seats. Republicans have 216. They only need two more. There are 14 outstanding seats that have yet to be called. We also have breaking election news tonight. Yes, a week after the elections, we're still calling it in California. Two longtime incumbents will hold on to their seats. CNN projecting Republican Congressman Ken Calvert will win another term in his Southern California district that puts the GOP now, if you're keeping score, and we are at 217 seats. That means we're just one seat away from getting the 218 number they need to now take control of the House. And we have more breaking election news. CNN can now project that Josh Carter, the Democratic incumbent, in California's 9th District will hold on to his seat, defeating Republican Tom Patty. Now, this means Democrats will control at least 207 seats in the House. But the numbers there, you see, the wind is at the back of Republicans at just 208, 17, one spot left. CNN has a projection to make. Uh, moderate Democrat Jared Golden has held on to win re-election in the state of Maine. He's one of the few Democrats representing a Trump-1 district and has challenged his party on economic policy issues. Jared Golden wins re-election in Maine. But right now, we can make a major projection in the battle for control of Congress with huge, huge consequences here in Washington and indeed across the nation. CNN projects that Republicans will win control of the U.S. House of Representatives reclaiming a majority for the first time in four years. This is a major blow to Democrats as Republicans gain new power to potentially limit President Biden's agenda and to make crucial decisions about House investigations. Breaking news, CNN can now project the winner of the very close and closely watched race for the mayor of Los Angeles. Congresswoman Karen Bass has beaten billionaire Rick Caruso. This was the most expensive campaign in L.A. history. Bass surviving what had been a bruising race that focused on crime, homelessness, economic anxiety. Caruso spent $100 million of his personal fortune in this race. It remained too close to call for more than a week. But here we are making this call tonight. Karen Bass, the winner of the L.A. mayor's seat. She becomes the first woman ever elected mayor of Los Angeles. 